we as family graduates we all have information about all the exams but we don't know the details the intricate details hidden within these exams see as a student i had an issue because with so many um platforms or agencies coming through having an authentic source is very important for us as a student the faith factor was quite important yes. for us the thing is our, our objective is to earn with the profession that we are working in so being an intern also we earn it's yes. just 10 15 concepts the concepts remain the same but the questions and the approach that we take that matters oh hello everyone and welcome to academically in another podcast So Janice is with us. So she is basically a doctor of pharmacy graduate from Kerala, and she passed this exam in her first attempt. Okay, so we will talk to her and see her journey, and uh, how she passed the exam, how many hours she study, and what she want to say. You know, I mean, any research she employed to help you might be in your future uh, if you are a pharmacist in the market of India. So welcome, Janice, and first of all, congratulations to you. Thank you, sir, and thank you to the whole academically team for helping me out on this journey. Ah, uh, thank you, so Dennis. Uh, if you can just give us intro about yourself, where you born, your studies, you know, or so far your your experience. Yeah, uh, myself, Dennis Jackson. I am a Kerala-ite, but I've done my schooling everything from Navi Mumbai. So until twelfth, I was in uh, Navi Mumbai, and after which I went for pursuing Doctor Pharmacy from the Nirmala College of Pharmacy in Kerala. It's in Ernakulam district, and yeah, after that I decided to write the CAPS exam, and then I approached academically. They were too friendly and supportive regarding the things. Although the CAPS exam was a kind of phobia for us, like since this was a six years journey for us, so we've had yeah. a lot of exams on our mind. So starting from NAPLEX to CAPS to PBC for Canada, so things were a bit compli- complicated as a student for us. But by the end of our course, we had. um resource people from uh, like the academically team to actually make it easier for us to understand to just you know dissect all those concepts regarding caps exam and how to approach it specifically regarding the eligibility that was quite a tedious task for me in fact all of those members to which whom i have spoken to they very well know me with regard to being a persistent uh, uh, disturbance to them regarding like how to do it when to do it on all being a very recent graduate getting the degree certificate was difficult so qu- quite a tedious task but then again once the eligibility was received uh yeah i was sure that okay this time i'm clearing the exam yeah i yes, know it thank you so much you know uh, i'm also basically a farm day graduate whenever we are doing farm days our dream like you know uh, we can go to us we can go to yeah. canada we can go to australia mm-hmm. we are doctor of pharmacy we are a doctor we are cool and because lot of things with uh, in your mind is especially if you are in your fifth or sixth year right Yes. So, yes. Uh, how you decide basically to go for CAP? You did your some research, and how you know about this? So, COVID was a time that was actually the time when I actually got time to sit with myself and check out like what all what what is my purpose of doing this. and that's when i you know i kept searching for platforms like people or resources from where i can get the information regarding these exams so naplex because it, the thing is we are, we as family graduates we all have information about all the exams but we don't know the details the intricate details hidden within these exams so then caps was something that was a little more easier it was like approachable as a student it didn't look like a fear to me it didn't make me feel okay this is not possible but caps was like it's something that's possible with proper support and guidance so academically definitely had a very vital role because i've been revolving with this academically page for around 1 1 and a half year from 2022 or 22 and i was you know constantly going through all those teachers all those faculty members all of your post on instagram searching through okay this is the thing that is the thing trying to understand what is this is all and then later on finally i landed up all you hear i mean from your college or you on, on, on like instagram or facebook or youtube all of them all of them i had approached individually and then again in college when it came through then i was like okay fine now that i'm sure that okay so because see as a student i had an issue because with so many um platforms or agencies coming through having an authentic source is very important for us as a student the faith factor was quite important yes, for us you are right so even if you are from like there is some consultancies there are some agencies there they are basically you know this is very tough exam or this and that and um, they are charging 10 lakh 15 lakh i, I know some consultancy in kerala you know uh, they are doing things 
So uh, yeah. and, and especially uh, uh, Janis, uh, if we compare like uh, uh, that NAPLAC, so NAPLAC is like not easy task because you need to go to US and yes. need to write the exam and yes. getting a visa is very very uh, tough. This is not yes. something uh, yeah, yeah, uh, easy for you, you know. But in Australia, CAP or at least PBC or PBC also very tough exam as compared to CAP. CAP is the easiest exam I can. It will be easier than DHA exam right now. Because mm -hmm. it also required 60% mark. PVC also required 60% mark to pass the exam. But CAP mm -hmm. required only 50% mark. Mm -hmm. and, On top of uh, it, uh, yeah. you can work as intern pharmacist as well. The thing is, our, our objective is to earn with the profession that we are working in. So being an intern also, we earn, we get to learn. Yes, so, so many students think that the intern in India is not getting paid free of job is doing but in Australia if you are doing interview you will getting this is a job basically yes, yes yes and you can become a clinical pharmacist easily in Australia so one Janice will come to Australia you know and then she can once she become a pharmacist then she can go to SHP to become a clinical pharmacist otherwise very difficult journey in US so I do not recommend to anyone and especially the farm they get to it uh, if you are okay. going to study there if you have 40 50 lakh rupees you are going ready to invest then, yeah, that's fine for you. You, you can go to US. But mm -hmm. again, you know, you want to uh, like low investment, like eight lakh, seven lakh, ten lakh. You know, so Australia can be the best option for you to market and become a farmer. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, Dennis, many uh, your classmates might be they are working like in farm coaching, clinical research here in here in India, right? Yes, yes. So what do you want to say? I mean, this is a very tough exam or easy or mediocre exam. Uh, what is your rating for this exam? Mm, this is above average exam. I wouldn't say it's an easy cup of tea mm. because the questions, are, the concepts are the same. It's yes. just 10, 15 concepts. The concepts remain the same, but the questions and the approach that we take, that matters. Mm. With regard to the question, trying to understand and dissecting the question within the given time frame and trying to answer them and trying to understand what the questioner is trying to get from us is important. That's that's the key. That's what I felt like while answering yeah. it. Even I mean, I have, I had, since the morning, I have interviewed so many students. So many students, did they uh, give this exam within 15 minutes, 16 minutes, you know, and then finish. Uh, so sometimes, you know, you will get a lot of questions from the mock test. And if yes. you if your concept is clear, definitely you will clear the exam. Uh, that's the main thing. And PharmD graduate, I, I understand that there is a pharmacology and pharmacotherapy very strong as compared to the other, you know. Yes. It's also one of the uh, reasons. Yeah. Yes, definitely, yes, because uh, the one-year one, uh, one year practice, like the internship that we have, mm. definitely there were certain concepts from pharmacology that we don't get from theory. It comes through interaction with the physician during the ward rounds. So, yes, that did have a role in, you know, trying to, you know, give me the idea while trying to answer questions, yes. But then again, we are a bit weak in ceutics and the formulation aspect, but that is manageable. It's 30%, so yes, that's the confidence boost. So yeah, yes. but then I wrote my exam in the complete time frame. I didn't finish it early. I took time. I kept reading it, rereading it. If I missed it, or because all our faculty members did uh, focus on the point that don't read it fast, don't do it in a hurry. Just try to read, absorb it, and answer it. Because most of the time, two options look almost right. So yeah, yeah. choosing the the exact one, the accurate one, it was time consuming. Yes, or I went through two to three times, I, I don't know, probably because of the pressure or is it because the, the, the points were still in my head, so I sat through the entire time, did it. So, Janice, you know, like, you know, uh, how many hours do you study per day? Uh, yeah, I, I want to see, you attend live classes or recorded sessions you are attending? I attended the live classes. So, okay. I attended the live classes and I also kept, the, the recorded sessions were like, I kept doing it for one month over and again at although the, we had speed differences like we, we could increase the speed and see but then the objective was trying to recollect all those points that i attended during the life class, class once again so that it's you know settled in my head it's it's, it's there it's not going anywhere it's it's, it's just and there day, yeah. how many hours you study and this is like how many months you your uh, preparation total for this exam uh, uh, i can say that the previous three months were the core preparation time but before that, I had joined, so at that point, I gave, got the peripheral idea about this exam, the portions that I have to focus on. So it gave me an idea to put out, put out a strategy in the next three months. 
So once my course finished, I sat back, attended all the live classes. So live classes itself made up um, two hours a day on the weekdays and four hours a day on Saturdays and Sundays. And then individually for myself, I used to spend around six hours separately. And all those mock tests, I have answered each one of them around 10 to 12 times. Excellent. I mean, this is very good, you know, and you have to attend this mock test and, uh, and if you did any mistake, any wrong uh, question, answer, go back to see your study, your mm -hmm. material, lecture, you know, and come back again. So, uh, practice is uh, make perfect, which means as many times you can, you know, you, you need to do the uh, yes, academically gave me that. If I'm not wrong, there was this chart in which they had given that the number of mock tests with 10 attempts. So that is what mm -hmm. gave me the idea that we can do it for 10 times. Okay, if you do it, and that too from the beginning, before mm -hmm. the classes began. So like I kept doing it. If I'm wrong, fine. But once yes. then I come across. Uh, if you're wrong, definitely. I mean, you know, then you have to go back and see uh, why you know your concept is not clear. So if, yeah. if you focus in that way, definitely you can clear the exam easily. I can say. Yes. So Janet, at the end, what you want to say, look, especially the girls who are watching us, you know, from the graduate, they are thinking that, you know, hey, we want to do this and that, you know, and we want to write the NAPLAC or PBC or CAP, and CAP is very tough exam, you know. No, that's just a phobia created by those who don't find it approachable or the effort. Like, it, it's just about putting behind all those pressures that you get. Because before writing this CAPS exam, I had a lot of people telling that this year the pattern will change, that will happen, this will happen. After all, the thing is trying to become the pharmacist that you've been studying for. So whether it's a pharmacist or a clinical pharmacist, if you have the humility to become a pharmacist, only then you will become a clinical pharmacist. Because as yes. a family, we are always told that you have to become clinical pharmacist. But the point is, just understand what a pharmacist is and then grow beyond that. We you have the opportunities. So, yeah. That's well, this is very good that. in Australia because they give one year internship. You will learn a lot of things in that during the internship and then you can uh, go ahead to become a clinical pharmacist, consultant pharmacist in Australia in an easy way. There is a institution uh, called SHP, Society of Hospital Pharmacists Australia. You can go there and, you know, uh, uh, grab their course, become clinical pharmacist. Yeah, thank you so much, Janice. Sure, sir, and thank you again for all the help. So and we come in. Thank you, thank, thank you, you. Thank you so much. Yeah, bye.